On today's episode of Locked On Utes, we react to the comments Cam Rising made about just how serious his injury he sustained in the Rose Bowl was, and look ahead to the second half of the season for Utah and offer up some predictions. All that and more on today's Locked On Utes. You are Locked On Utes, your daily podcast on the Utah Utes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. everyone and thank you for making lockdown youtube your first listen every single day we are available on all platforms including youtube and wherever you may get your podcast this is your first time joining our show thank you guys very much and thank you for those of course who do make us your first listen every day make sure you guys like and subscribe on our way to 2,000 subscribers hope and hit that before the cal game as i think we're less than 20 away now so uh once again appreciate all you guys who have subscribed my name is jt which is still former intern inside the university of utah athletic department today's episode of locked on Utes is brought to you by linkedin jobs these days every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business that's why linkedin jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free you can post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college it's all caps no spaces locked on college terms and conditions do apply on today's show we're going to be looking ahead and offering some uh predictions on the second half of the season for for utah looking ahead i think they're going to do predicting some of the key games and matchups obviously that tough stretch where you have you play USC, then Oregon, then Arizona State, not as stuff, obviously, but then Washington. That's three top 10 teams in the span of four weeks. Talk about how I think Utah will do in that and just offering predictions if I think they'll return to the Pac-12 championship game. So let's – but first got to start with something, and that is uh, Cam Rising did provide more on the on the Bill Riley show on ESPN 700. Uh, Cam Rising does a weekly interview with Bill and uh, joined his show and talked further about his uh, – just how severe his injury was. There have been – rumors very no i shouldn't even call them rumors i just fans started crap for lack of a better word um that cam rising was not it's so ridiculous this is why i've never talked about this because of how ridiculous it is um i i just can't stand when people try to take shots or like speak for athletes in their heart and i just that's just drives me insane I, it's one of the biggest maybe my biggest pet peeves when people try to be like oh he's doing this or like he's sitting out like you have no you have no idea what's going on in that situation no one does i don't you guys don't we're not cameraizing we're not in there so um i and i know i'm not really speaking to the majority of you i don't think many i don't think anyone who listens to me regularly does does think like that but it, it just really frustrates me that there are people out there who are willing to take shots at an athlete's heart and uh, and just call them out and be like, uh, or not call them out, but even just question their toughness, like things like you have no, just no idea, no right, no base to do any of that. So it really does disgust me. But we are going to talk about today because Cam Rising felt the need to talk about it because uh, those rumors and those rumblings, as ridiculous as they are, they were growing louder and louder. And uh, what was said was by Cam Rising was he did provide more depth on his injury. He said he didn't just tear his ACL, he tore his meniscus, his MTFL, and his MCL. Um, just very severe stuff. He even said it's the same injury that a Kyler Murray and a Hendon Hooker suffered. Hendon Hooker at Tennessee last year, Kyler Murray at the Arizona Cardinals, of course. Uh, both those guys are still out. I don't think Hendon Hooker is going to play for sure this year. I think there's rumors that Kyler Murray might. like. There's some reports like, oh, he's going to try to return. That's the... Then those rumors more reputable, obviously, than the rumors I just referenced about a about the ridiculous one started by fam. The rumors about Kyler Murray returning those are those are legit rumors by NFL people. Um, but I mean, you could just hear in Cam. Just if you haven't watched the interview, I would highly encourage you to because it really is a player just pouring his soul out in some ways, his frustrations because you can just hear when he's. I mean, like I said. It's not a man who he does not is not it's he doesn't sound like one because he's not a man who is holding out like because oh he could play but he's holding out for his draft stock. It's just the most ridiculous thing once again. I just I can't stand that this is even a notion that's out there for him or Brant Keithy. I just I just don't I don't like talking about athletes that way. We have no way of knowing anything like that. And obviously it's just not true. So there's nothing to know about it. It's just incorrect. Absolutely. So that's where this stuff does drive me nuts, as I already mentioned. But uh, you could just hear in Cam's voice. He just says it's uh, it's not an easy comeback. He said, just talked about how he's been working his tail off. And as I said, you can just hear in his voice how hard he's trying to get back out there and how badly he wants to be out there. Cam Rising 
has done amazing things for the Utah football program, helping their capture the, not just their first Pac-12 championship, but then helping them go back to back. Um, he's a huge part of the reason. Without him, they don't win the Pac-12 championship game. I mean, you can say that about any qu- quarterback, but Cam's impact was especially interesting in 2021, considering the team was 1-2, and two, and it just looked like it was going to end up being a, a pretty forgettable season for Utah that year, and then it turns into one in which she rates Pac-12 championship trophy, and that doesn't happen without Cam Rising, a guy who puts his body on the line constantly for his team, whether it was like he did in the Rose Bowl against Penn State, taking that shot uh, against USC, which uh, Bill and Cam actually bring up in the interview. It's a, it's a pretty fun interaction when they discuss it too. Um, once again, I would highly recommend you guys check that out on ESPN 700. Um, but with Cam, this is a guy who absolutely wants to be out there for his team. He came back to Utah to help them win another Pac-12 championship game. He has been talking about it constantly, how that is his goal to get back on the field and help them win that. His goal was not to come back for a year hopefully just rehab at school and then get healthy enough where some NFL team takes a chance on you. That, 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 that's not Cam Rising. That's not what he's about, and that's not what he's going to do. Everything we've ever seen from Heard from Cam Rising indicates that he is a warrior in terms of playing through injuries and just doing everything he can to will his team to victories, as he's done many a times as a Utah Ute. So I just, yeah, once again, it just really is unfortunate that there are certain people, small individual voices in this awesome fan base, this fan base I truly love, but there are always going to be bad apples in every fan base that choose to spread rumors and things of that nature about how like, Oh, a cam rising is um, like just sitting out for his draft. So it really is. It's insane to me. It's just so ridiculous. Um, And I could just hear in camp how frustrated he is by that, that the notion that a guy who has given everything um, to this school in so many ways would be willing to, sit out and just choosing to sit out like to save himself that goes against everything we know about football players in general and especially goes against everything we know about cam rising cam rising is a team first guy he's never been a guy who takes all the credit he always gives it to his teammates so i i really don't like that this is the shot that uh that some fans are trying to take a cam rising and i applaud cam for speaking out about it and just really putting those rumors to bed because clearly this is someone um you can just hear it in his voice once again like this is someone doing everything in his power to be out there Um, The one thing I will say that is unfortunate about this whole situation, I'm not the first to bring this up. It's been brought up by multiple people already today. Um, This is where I wish that there was just more, just based on how severe the injury was that Cam told us, it it doesn't feel like there was any way he's going to play against Florida, that he was going to play against Florida. So why that was kept a secret and then allowed certain, like I said, if, if they just rule Cam out because of the injury, I don't think this whole crap rumor that cam was sitting out for draft stock reasons ever even gets started because it's like oh no cam is hurt but then when there's rumors about no no he's going to come back you know that was a conversation on the offseason i said that i thought cam was going to come back too we all did and contributed to the thought that cam was going to come back and then some people took that as well everyone thought cam was going to come back and he hasn't come back so some people just are made up their own and infer just made up stuff that like oh he's just safe sitting and sitting out to try to save his draft stock so um, yeah, just ridiculous stuff, but I do wish Utah would have just put it out there. And I know the competitive advantage of trying to disguise like your court, like who's going to be your quarterback, all that aspect. But now it sucks that Cam Rising, the person, has to deal with some of those ramifications of having his character questioned by certain people in the fan base or just deal with those rumors and those notions out there uh, for uh, just an aspect of the game, trying to maintain a competitive advantage. So I understand what the coaches were trying to do by it. Once again, I'm not in the room, so I don't know Like, if there was really a chance for Cam to play week one based on what was outlined. It just doesn't sound like there was. But once again, we're not in there. We don't know for sure. But uh, just an unfortunate situation that's played out. And uh, it's, overall, it sounds like Cam was in good spirits, though. feels like he, we can tell he's working hard to get back out there, too. And hopefully we will see him back out on the field as well. But I really do applaud him uh, for going out there and, uh, and just kind of – putting those rumors to bed, sticking up for himself and defending himself because he has earned uh, Utah's fans loyalty and trust uh, when he is dealing with things like this, not to be questioned for missing games. So uh, hats off to Cam Rising once again. We hope to see him back on the field soon, but uh, either way, just glad he is taking care of himself um, in terms of working hard and rehabbing and not in putting himself out there in danger right now when he's clearly not 100%. I'm glad he's taking the necessary time he needs to get back and get healthy, and I'm glad the doctors are working with him to ensure that he does get back to the field 100% healthy, and we will continue to support him until he is back and healthy 100%, even if that doesn't come this season, which is on the table at this point, I feel like, based on that interview. I do. I still believe Cam's going to play. I think he's going to play soon, 
but he definitely could miss the season now with, and once again, that's just how the, with this injury, you can tell there's other quarterbacks missing the season who have suffered this injury. So that's what makes it tough about trying to predict and just talk about when we will see cam rising next, but either way, at least we, there are, at least most people will stop. There will be, still be a few, but at least most people will realize, oh no, this isn't draft stock related. Cam Rising is genuinely hurt, which is something we've always knew. And all of you who tune into the show regularly, I am sure you knew that as well. But now the people who try to start whatever crap rumor that was can can finally be silent. So either way, uh, moving on to second segment, we are going to be discussing how I think Utah will do in the second half of the season, talking about if they can beat uh, three top 10 teams in the span of four weeks. We're going to be diving into that in one moment. But first, I want to talk to you guys a little bit more about our friends at LinkedIn Talent Solutions. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have the access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn Jobs is a great resource for all of you to use if you're looking for great employees ready to come in and get to work really soon. There are tons of great candidates out there, and it's really easy to create a job post because you can just go over and add your job to the purple ha- and to the purple hashtag hiring frame to show that you're hiring, spreading the word on your LinkedIn profile because you can use simple tools like screening questions that make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. That's just one of the many reasons that small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash LockedOnCollege. That's LinkedIn.com slash LockedOnCollege, all caps, no spaces, to post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. Also want to talk to you guys about another sponsor of today's episode in UCCU. Learn and earn the UCCU mobile banking app that pays your entire family to learn about money. Kids look to parents to become more financially literate. Parents don't always know the answers. Learn and earn breaks down financial topics into fun bite-sized educational games like quizzes and trivia. Every time family members complete topics, they earn points that can occur and can be redeemed for gift cards to stores like Amazon, Apple, Sephora, Walmart, Nike, and so much more. There is age-appropriate content for every member of the family who compete against each other and track their progress on leaderboards. Learn and Earn is inside the UCU mobile banking app, so play it anytime, anywhere. The more you play, the more you learn, and the more you learn, the more you earn. Learn and Earn, part of UCCU's award-winning Be Money Smart Youth Banking Program, helping kids, teens, and parents have fun while becoming more financially literate together. UCCU, love where you bank. All righty, going back into this one, let's talk about Utah as it pertains to their success in the second half of the season. And just to give you guys a reminder of what Utah's second half of the season will entail as they're currently on a bye week. Hope you guys enjoy your uh, your bye week as well. I'm not sure what your activities are going to consist of. I'm sure still some good college football games on, so I'm probably some of you will be tuned into those, but uh hope you enjoy uh just it is always a bummer when we don't get Utah football to talk about over the weekend, but uh, also a little bit more free time for some of you guys maybe to go do something fun during the fall and just capitalize on that fall weather, which is always so gorgeous in Utah, uh, of course. Uh, talk about Utah's schedule. Utah 4-1 and one right now. Uh, they'll come out. They'll host Cal at home. Then they will travel to take on the ninth-ranked Trojans in a rematch of last year's Pac-12 championship game and one of just the best games of college football last year, that regular season matchup between Utah and USC. That will be in the Coliseum. Then Utah will host Oregon at home, and they will also host Arizona State at home that following week. And then they have to travel to Washington, to Tucson, and then finally they host Coach Prime in the last game of the regular season. So asking the question I posed because, I yes, Utah is going to beat Cal. I even think with Nate Johnson out there, they should beat Cal. With the level this Utah defense is still playing at right now, and the Utah offense still going to be able to do some things even without Cam Rising, just I, it's they'll operate much better at home still. I think um, I still think Nate is capable of getting a win against Cal and against Arizona State to look ahead to that one too. Uh, but the thing that makes Utah's stretch really interesting af- off the bye is after the Cal game, you go to USC once again, Oregon and Washington. So USC is ranked nine, Oregon is eighth, Washington is seven. I think all those teams are going to continue to climb too. I, I don't see them. The only one, I think Oregon and Washington actually play each other. So I should correct myself a little bit uh, th- when that game is on October and that game's October 14th. So one of them will probably fall outside the top 10. I truly believe both those teams are top 10 teams. <laughs> I just think this is a situation where because they play each other, one of them is going to get knocked down a peg, unfortunately. Um, But looking at it, can Utah win all three of those games? They can. If Cam Rising is back and healthy, we have no idea if he's going to play against Cal. And we don't know then USC, all of that type of availability. If Cam does not play in those three games, barring 
what would probably be one of the greatest defensive performances of all time. Utah will go 0 and 3 in those games more than likely. You just can't miss your starting quarterback. Um, and just once again, a guy who is a top 10 quarterback in college football to me in Cam Rising, you can't miss him and beat top 10 teams. Doesn't happen. We just saw Utah at Oregon State. You, you need him back. You do if you want to win these games. So that's where for Utah, if they have Cam, they can win every single one of these games. If they don't, they can't. The quarterback position is that important at every level of football. And Utah can go 3-0 in those tough games I mentioned. It will be incredibly hard even if Cam Rising is healthy. I could still see Utah going 0-3 with Cam back just because he hasn't had time to get legs, his legs under him. I could see Utah going 1-2. I could see Utah going 2-1. All things are possible. The 2-1 outcome is probably the most likely. I'll still stick with my preseason prediction, honestly, that I said Utah would lose against Washington with how good the Huskies have looked so far. I'm not going to go off that. And it's just hard to win on the road in college football. Saw it again and how Utah had their worst offensive performance of the season. Oh, it came on the road to a top 20 team. I wonder why that is. Cause it's really hard to execute on the road in college football in hostile environments. And we saw it again with Utah with uncharacteristic drops, uh, a key false start that hurt Utah, uh, accuracy issues that, have, that, that kind of has plagued Utah at times all season long. But uh, just in general, just the Utah's worst offense performance of the season came on the road. That's every college program. That's what happens, especially when you play top 20 teams like Utah has to do two more times on the road this season in that difficult stretch. So, once again, can Utah go 3-0 in that stretch? They can with Cam Rising. More than likely, I think they'll go 2-1. and one. So because I think they'll ha if Cam Rising plays, um, and then if Cam doesn't, then like we said, they're not going to probably win any of those games. But uh, looking at the USC game, I really think, and this is where it's tough, if Cam doesn't play against Cal, it's just going to be so, it's hard for me to picture him coming in against USC, his first start in his uh, return, as good as the Utah defense is playing. It's Caleb Williams, it's Lincoln Riley. They're motivated, and I know it wasn't a problem for Utah last year, but it is just so hard to beat a Heisman Trophy winner and one of the best offensive minds in college football three times. And yeah, I was wrong in the Pac-12 championship game. I said it was hard to do it twice. Utah did it, um, but it's it's hard. <laughs> like I said, just because Utah's made it look good so far, I said I think Utah can and will win this game if Cam Rising plays, but it's hard, especially I know it's not cool for Utah fans for, as us to like be like Caleb Williams and be fans of his game. Just in terms of the things he does when he's on the field, he's still he is the best college quarterback I've ever seen play in person, and one of the best college quarterbacks I've ever seen. I think Joel Klatt said it really well on a Colin Cowherd show recently. Just his ability to make accurate throws off platform outside the pocket is the best he's ever seen from a college quarterback. I think he said, and, and I think I agree with him, and that's why I've been so blown away uh, the couple times I've gotten to watch him in person and just in general. But. Um, even with the level he plays at, if Cam Rising is up to 95%, I think this Utah defense is good enough for Utah to be able to get a win. But make no mistake, it would be a monumental upset for Utah to still beat USC with their quarterback having missed as much time as he has. So uh, that'll be an interesting one to monitor. I do think Utah gets Oregon at home still. I just think Utah playing at home with Cam Rising, especially if that's a loss against USC. But Utah's really good at home. I'm not really going to pick Utah to lose at home until they lose at home because why would I when they're operating at this strong, when they just play so well at home? With the defense, uh, we all good Cam Rising's played at home for Utah too. So if Cam's back, I do think they'll beat a really good Ducks team. But I could see Bo Nix leading, leading Oregon in there with Dan Lanning's squad, who Dan Lanning, very good motivator for those of you who saw the Colorado game. Um, that was so ridiculous. Also, people were mad about that, in my opinion. Uh, that's just coach talk, I think, for all of you who have been in the locker room at some point or those of you who have just watched like different coaching clips. Coaches say whatever to get their teams fired up. So I had no problem with any of the – comments Dan Landing made. That was a while ago, though, so I don't know why I brought it up there, but either way. Um, anywho, uh, looking at the rest of Utah's schedule, um, going back through it then. So after that, then you after the Oregon game, you get Arizona State. Utah will beat Arizona State. That's a program that is uh, in the first year of a rebuild, and rebuilds take time. Utah's defense, once again, like Utah's defense will win them the Arizona State game. I have no doubt about that. Uh, at Washington, already says probably going to be a loss. At Arizona, Cam plays, Utah will win. If Cam doesn't play, Utah could very well lose this one too because of how pesky the Wildcats are. Just on the season, they're tough at home too. I like what Coach Fish is doing with that team. Uh, but if Cam plays, Utah will win that one. Um, and then the final game of the season for Utah is Utah against Colorado. If it's Nate Johnson for Utah it's, or whoever's the quarterback is, it's going to be a really physical battle because the Utah defense will make plays, but I still think Shador Sanders and Colorado, this team has some talent offensively where they will also score points and finish drives in the end zone. So 
by that point in the season, if Nate has been the full season starter, I expect him to be playing some of his best football. So I still think Utah finds a way with Nate Johnson in a close game. If Cam plays and there's stuff on the line for Utah in this game, I, I think we're going to see Utah win by 10 to 15 points still, um, just because how good the defense is. And if Cam's been playing for that long, then uh, he should be operating at a pretty high level too. So yeah, that's how I see Utah finishing. I still have Utah going 10 and two, um, but then do I have them going to the Pac-12 title game still? That is what I'm going to be talking about in one moment. But first, I want to talk to you guys about our great friends at FanDuel Sportsbook. Just because there's no Utah game this week doesn't mean there's not great action to get in on at FanDuel, especially at the NFL level, because you can snap in action this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including the spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, an official partner of the NFL. Also want to remind you guys, since this episode of Lockdown Utes is dropping on a Friday. There's another exciting co- piece of Lockdown content dropping on Friday, and it's Lockdown College Football Kickoff Live. Each Friday, Lockdown will go live at 11 a.m. Eastern to 1 p.m. Eastern on every Lockdown College YouTube channel. College Football Kickoff Live will get you ready for the biggest games, the biggest storylines, and the biggest matchups going on in the sport each week, and they provide you with the in-depth analysis only Lockdown can deliver through their insightful analysts and just their stable of locked on college hosts who cover their teams every single day. You can find locked on college football kickoff live every Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern on any locked on college YouTube channel. You won't want to miss it. All righty, coming back in to close this one out. Will Utah make the Pac 12 title game? The odds and logical answer would be no. Right now, you already suffered a loss to Oregon State. You have to play three top 10 teams, even if they might not all be top 10 by the time you play them. I still believe three top 10 teams and a Colorado team that we'll see what they're fighting for that final game of the season. Um, I, I definitely think that's one the buffs could be very hungry for. So it's, it's a tough schedule for Utah, but I had them going 10 and two, assuming cam rising comes back and plays. That's a big assumption. Hard to make. I know I said, this is where it gets tough. I, I would obviously, Rather not be talking about like if Cam was or wasn't healthy, but as we said in the show, uh, started the show with that is the reality we're in. And there's once again no doubt that Cam is not truly hurt and doing everything in his power to come back. And uh, I, I still think Cam is going to come back. And I think this Utah team is going to make things happen. And as I said, logically wise, it doesn't really make sense to pick Utah at this moment to make the Pac-12 title game. Just like last year, I mistakenly recorded a little one of those short now videos talking about how Utah's chances at the Pac-12 championship game were dashed after their defeat that the, by the Ducks when the Ducks beat them. And I didn't understand all the crazy scenarios. I got tripped up because there was so many that Utah was still alive somehow. Um, it seemed improbable that Utah was going to make it when Oregon was beating the crap out of Oregon State. And then Oregon State said, we're not going to throw the ball. We're just going to run it and somehow managed to come back in 2022, which still doesn't seem like a real sentence to erase that big of a deficit by not throwing the ball. But they did it, and thus Utah was in the Pac-12 championship game. So until Utah is officially eliminated from the Pac-12 title game, I'm not going to count them out because it's not been a good idea to count out Kyle Whittingham these last two years. It's not been a good idea to count out Cole Bishop, Junior Tafuda. Um, this Andy Ludwig, J- Jim Harding, getting the, getting everything together, even though the offensive line and offensive play calling, I think, have had their weaknesses and haven't been the strongest this season. I still trust those coaches to get those units together for the second half. And as I said, I believe Cam Rising is going to come back. So I do have Utah in the Pac-12 championship game. And of course, if they're going to get there, they're going to win it a third straight year. That is what I believe is going to happen. I It is, once again, not the logical thing, I think, but uh Neither was all the stuff that Utah's accomplished the last couple of years. So we'll see if uh, how it plays out for Utah. But that is going to do it for today's episode of Lockdown Utes. Thank you guys, as always, for tuning in. Uh, once again, nearly at 2,000 subscribers. So if you did make it to the end, I greatly appreciate that. Please hit that like and subscribe button. Look forward to talking to you guys next week, too. Utah should beat Cal. But we see this every year where a team should beat a team, and it doesn't happen. And just as the team does, you still have to break down and analyze that a opponent give them the respect they deserve so that you can emerge victorious in these games you're supposed to win and especially if cam rising doesn't play i think nate and utah will get a win in this one i think they'll still get it handedly definitely could be wrong 
That is what we're going to be breaking down. Utah versus Cal on next week's show and all the latest news revolving around the Utah football program. That'll be on next week's Locked on Utes. Have a fantastic bye weekend and we'll see you Monday.